burns. <coughs> Sweet. We got one there, one there. Now all we gotta do is solder the ferrule and we are off to the races. Solder the ferrules together as well. Just wanna make sure I got full penetration around that. That is almost a horn. Okay, so we're gonna let that cool down. And then we are going to, we're gonna braise that uh, brace. So this is my leaf. This is my bell brace. So I actually used to, I used to grind these out by hand, which sucks. But then I had uh, someone I met on Instagram. He has a fiber laser, which is the ones that can cut metal. So he laser cut like a couple hundred of these for me, which was super cool. He actually, he's a metal spinner, where he used to make pots and pans, I believe, something. He does like all that kind of stuff. His name is Jow Originals. Cool dude. So he cut a bunch of these out for me, which saved my life, because the ones I would cut out by hand aren't perfect, and it made me uncomfortable. But these look really great, and then I bent them, obviously. All I did, I don't have a press or anything for these right now, I'd like to, but what I do is I just go around the bell mandrel. I kneel it, obviously, and then I just flex it with my fingers, and then take a rawhide mallet, and then I tap all the corners in a rawhide mallet, but you can see how straight those lines of light are. It's very hard to do. Even around the uh, those two inside corners, it's pretty dang straight. All you do is you keep tapping, tap, 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 and then you take a burnisher, and you kind of let the thing float on the mandrel, and you burnish the crap out of it. No filing necessary. I just took this on the belt sander. It should look pretty good once it's finished. I'm using the black flux just because that's what I got. I don't really care about what flux they use for, soft so or for silver soldering. It doesn't really matter. People argue about it, and I find it funny. Um, the white works good, the black works good. Black is stinkier. The white's easier to rehydrate, so I usually tend to go with white. It's not rocket science here. If we're, if we're talking bells, it's totally different. But for silver solder, don't matter. And I get my silver solder from Vota, because it's cheap. Now I need the little thing. Oh no, it's right here. So this is a little piece of nickel silver I did on the lathe. Nothing fancy here, drilled a hole, cut a uh, little radius with a little form tool, make it look kind of cool. And this is our socket. All I do is put that on there, centered up. Doesn't even have to be really centered, no one will ever notice, but. Just using a butane torch, I heat it up, put all my heat on the thing. Sometimes it slides when the flux heats up. That's it. So I just put it down the center of the hole so that way I don't have any entry points showing around the outside, just got a nice ring. Just a nice ring of silver solder. Boom, that's it. That's all she wrote. So then I have a little thing, uh, my pickle. I have a big tub of this at home, but I haven't brought it here yet. This is a milk stone remover from Tractor Supply. It's just phosphoric and then a degreaser, which I like it. It's cheap too. Woo! Let that sit in there for about seven days and then you'll, you'll get it good. You rinse this off, get the flux off of there because I'm sick of touching flux. Like very sick of touching flux, I keep doing it. So these gotta get lapped in. I don't wanna do that until I have my brace in there because they uh, often are a pain in the ass. So let's get that brace in there. So I got my sockets. These are actually old can still parts. These are like trombone hand side sockets or something. I've been using them just cause I had them. Um, I'll make them once I run out. Oh, I don't have any wire. I can't do this right now. I need binding wire. I actually used silver solder as binding, binding wire yesterday. It actually worked pretty good. Where are the calipers? Oh, I think they're at home right now. I'm like in between shops because we don't have the power here and also moving on with my machines here and getting it all wired up is a very expensive ordeal. And I'm very poor right now because I have to finish this horn and I'm, I'm way behind. I have to run back and forth, back and forth, which is very difficult because it gets old very quickly. But we are persevering. So I need to go get some binding wire, my calipers, and I think I'll actually cut this tube at home. Oh, 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 look at that. I have one already cut. It's like it was meant to be. The way this brace works, it's not really rocket science here. A tube, my brace, brace goes into tube. You don't need to put like wicking in there or anything to stop from like rattling going around because if you solder your thing right, you don't get rattling, so. Whoever told you that was crazy. That'll sit just like that, but like not crooked. So these are for much larger tubes. So all you do is you take like duck, duck bill pliers, grab onto that there, curl it in, grab onto that there, curl it in. Nothing crazy there. And then you just take it and you press it on the tube. And that one's got a weird thing, but once we get wire on there, we'll take a burnisher and we'll just burnish it out. I could actually do this without wire, but I don't like doing it like that. 
what you do to do this without wire, you take your socket and you actually take a pair of pliers and you oval your socket so that it's snug, like super snug inside the tube. I don't like doing that. Okay, let me go get the shit that I need. Maybe I'll get that tenon too. Here's the uh, the brace for my tenon. So I cast these. This is nickel silver. Like a glove. So we're actually gonna trim it a little. Doesn't need to be these, this long. These are like similar or copied actually from the old French horn bell brace. It's the same mold, but this works great for this. And they look so cool. I love that aesthetic. Yeah, so this is gonna get trimmed. Cut that other one off too. Well, maybe not. Maybe I'll leave it. No, I'll leave it. I'll leave the round. That's right, that's what I did on the other one. Right there, just on the left side. Cool, well, I'll, I'll come back. Wrapping up here, got the horn, I went back and got my wire, tenon made a tenon. So I got this brace in place and uh, just wired in and then you can see, let's see if I can get the focus. We have a pretty good fit. Enough space for the solder flow. No, uh, actually there's a weird bit. No, no, that's actually, yeah, I'm gonna, right there, you see the, see that little gap there? So all we're gonna do, all I do, you can't really see it, but you'll see the difference. Take a burnisher, and give it a little push. So now, that same spot, laid down. Ta-da. So I'm gonna solder that, and then I'm gonna flip it over, and I'm gonna solder that. I got my brace pre-buffed and in place, all that stuff, tenon pre-buffed, because it's really hard to buff around that guy. What you wanna do though, just to make sure your tenon's gonna actually work. Yeah, you take a crook and you just make sure that the crook doesn't bottom out in that tenon. Looks pretty good to me. Going to solder. How the does that not fit anymore? So I'm gonna do this metal brace first. It can be a little pesky sometimes. I need to get this slide. No, I don't actually, I'll just measure. I don't wanna mess with it with the brace in there. Thinks you're perfect, okay. So those are the brace feet I just soldered. So now I'm gonna solder the tube. You just need a tiny amount of solder. Nothing crazy, no big globs necessary. That's it. I'm gonna flip it over and then make sure that this side has flowed properly. A lot of times, yep, the back side of the brace feet won't be all the way flowed. So you basically, all you have to do is just heat it up from the side, maybe drop a tiny bit of solder in there. That's all she wrote. No heating and wiping necessary if you know how to solder. Wow, that looks really good. Now we gotta do the tenon. Yeah, we'll do the tenon. So I'm gonna do the, actually, I'm gonna do the brace first. I really wanna only add, have to add solder from out here because buffing in there is gonna be annoying. You kinda want your entry point to be on the outside. This is a hard brace to do though. I'm running out of butane. Uh, so a lot of people ask me why I don't use acetylene and I just don't really like it. I used it at an old job and it just seemed overkill for everything. And also it's expensive and a pain to get. Like butane, I walk into Home Depot and I buy it for $3. Acetylene, I need to fill out a lot of paperwork and all this stuff. Just cause I'm, maybe cause of where I'm at in the country. For bell breathing, I don't use it. It's just not really necessary. And it, it's a really dirty burning fuel and it's expensive. So the butane's fine. What I really want is one of those, um, it's a German, it's a, I wanna say it's Prezi. No, it's not Prezi, it's, it's, you can get it in the Bohm catalog. It's a really nice propane torch. That's pretty. Now I'm doing the tenon. Oh, Perkio, it's a Perkio torch. It's really good. My friend Dan has one. It's expensive though. Breaking my rules, so I have to add back here. No, no, I just got it. F yeah. I'm gonna need to wipe this one because I did a shitty job. You can see how messy it is. It's a hard brace to do because of, it's meant for a smaller diameter tubing and I didn't adjust it, so it's sitting fine and it'll be st sturdy. Okay, so that's all done. You can see how pretty that one is. <laughs> I was talking all that shit about my soldering and I solder like that, but that'll clean up fine. All the tinnings on the outside, so it's gonna be easy to clean up. I gotta do this one right here. That one turned out good. Those turned out really good. That's a horn. One brace left after these, and that's the bell brace, which is really, really hard to solder. Am I the only one who wipes solder joints with Portillo's napkins? That looks great. Nothing to complain about there. Yeah, now I gotta do the bell brace. I'm waiting on the nickel for the rod. Oh, let me go grab that out of the chemical. Yeah, so that turned out pretty good. You can see the red left is just the discoloration left that I'll buff away. What I'll do is I'll Dremel it before I put it on. I keep saying Dremel, I don't own a Dremel. 
I used to and then it died because it's a Dremel. I hate Dremels. It's like Andrew. I think I fit this already pretty dang good. Yeah. Yep, a couple little things to tweak, but that is fit pretty good. Um, so obviously you can see the dark spots we have to burnish down a little bit. Sometimes you just slide it differently along the bell. Yeah, it's better there. So this is so this is a hard brace to solder because of these corners in here. It's really hard to get solder to flow properly in there. I have to wait on that rod. I think I'm actually gonna do that once I get the horn back from engraving. Engraving is the one thing I don't do. I send it to Adam who's my friend, he does engraving for me because he's awesome. So I'm gonna clean the flux off this thing, probably box it up tomorrow and send it. Oh, I can play it, I can play it. You guys wanna hear how it sounds? I'm not a natural horn player, that's for sure, but I can, I can put a mouthpiece in it. Let's see if it makes notes. It makes notes. Yep, we have a horn. Still gotta do the bell brace and final polishing, but that's it. Cool, thanks.